Uh, my name is Mike Sostrick. I'm a commander with the Portland Police Department. Uh, what that means is that I'm in charge of all of our uniform assets, so all of our patrol division, um, traffic unit, Homeland Security, uh, Peaks Island, and all of our community policing initiatives. So in Portland, we've got about 164 or so sworn personnel. Uh, let me give you a little background about why we're here and how this whole thing got started. Um, MC and might be a little strong for uh, today's <laughs> event, uh, but thank you very much for having us over. Uh, Kevin, thank you very much. Craig, thank you very much. Um, it's so special to, to have the opportunity to come over here and, uh, and, and talk to everybody. It's, it's a good opportunity for us to, to continue to meet one of our goals for this project, was to get out, uh, meet the public, say hello, and kind of draw that uh, correlation between this poetry, this artistic project, and police work itself. Um, and quite frankly, if we have the opportunity to, to compete against that federal agency that wears mirrored shades at all times, day and night, um, in the Irish trip where everybody wants to go to Ireland and learn, um, yeah, then uh, we'll take that opportunity and run with it all day long. So um, for the Poetry Project, two years ago, uh, we had a, a really rough year uh, where we lost three members of our family, our Portland Police Department family. Um, one of them was a civilian employee of 30 plus years, uh, Mary McLaren, who was married to Bill McLaren of the criminal justice program here at SMCC, and who has been to Ireland more times than you can shake a stick at. Um, and that was a huge loss for us. Uh, we also lost uh, a sergeant, Rob Johnsey, uh, from the police department, who died of an accidental uh, gunshot wound in his own home in front of his family. Um, and that was a very, very tragic event. Um, for all of us because hopefully you hear it in any, every one of your criminal justice classes about how law enforcement is a family. Um, it's a family atmosphere. Your PDs are family. Your smaller teams are family. Um, your, your partner is a family. Uh, and that's the way we deal with uh, law enforcement. That's the way we address issues in our communities. And to lose one of them was very, very, very tragic for us. And then that set of circumstances um, would just, you know, absolutely blow your mind. To an extent that in the state of Maine, we had about 700 or so uh, police officers that attended that particular funeral. So that's how close-knit of a community that we have. Well, in one of the eulogies um, for Rob, his best friend talks about Rob and how he liked poetry. Um, and we talked about that connection between poetry and, and police work. Trust me, when the project came to us, we said exactly the same thing. Um, I don't see the connection. You got to be crazy. We don't want to get involved with this. It's too personal of a thing to stand up in front of somebody and talk and read, read a poem that you wrote. But Marty being Marty, who uh, we look at as our, as our poetry drill instructor, um, <laughs> she points us in the right direction and, and helps us move along. Um, she picked up on that immediately as part of an artistic program that she was trying to really get up and run. And we knew Marty, uh, we knew her very well. We were on a low level. Some people were writing some funny poems, uh, more bathroom door poetry than, than anything else. Um, so she said, geez, that's a great idea. Let's see if we can get involved uh, with that and try and get a program up and running. So we spoke to 10 different officers throughout the PD that were interested in poetry and photography. This is definitely a dual project. And we had everybody that volunteered to take part. And we wrote a bunch of poems last year. And nobody really knew what we were getting involved with. We were trying to, one, from a police perspective, support the family economically. This is a fundraiser for us. Um, as well as get the word out about Rob's life, the kind of person he was, the fact that he liked poetry. And do that direct connection to the public. The we versus them and us versus them. All that stuff is, is exactly right on. Um, for the way everybody deals with these issues on a regular basis. So we wrote a bunch of poems, and obviously this is this year's calendar, but we were all shocked when it came back um, because it had a very professional appearance. Um, and when we got a chance to read them, uh, we weren't just a bunch of knuckle-dragging SWAT cops running around, and <laughs> if it's black tactical gear and Velcro, we're loving it. Um, people could actually put pen to paper, and they had some really impressive work that came out of that. Uh, so we were very, very, very happy with that. And we got a chance to meet some great people, um, our civilian uh, poetry partners. And the, really, the program kind of ran off from there. Now, from all of our standpoint, um, we were kind of looking forward to doing additional calendars down the road, but for maybe charitable occasions like our youth services program, like the PAL program. But uh, we ended up losing another one of our sergeants uh, of a heart attack. Uh, at the age of 54, uh, really a young man by all uh, accounts. Um, a very, very good friend of all of ours, uh, a mentor, a leader, 
uh, a father of two passed away in his home again at about three o'clock in the morning. Uh, one of those individuals that had walked down the hallway had a force, a nature about him. Uh, you knew when he was in the building. You knew when he was at a crime scene. Um, he was definitely a true leader and somebody I definitely counted as a, as a, as a good friend of mine. And we were right back to that situation again. Well, so much for the youth services program. We're going to try and go back in and raise some money for his kids. Um, and we dove back into this kind of work. So that's why we're here. That's where this, this calendar and this program uh, stems from. Um, so I ask you to bear with us. Uh, and we're going to go ahead and uh, read some of these poems off. Um, I'm very proud of everybody that's here, uh, both sworn and non-sworn, all our civilian partners, Marty, um, for all the work that you've done. And I'm going to go ahead and read off a couple of these poems, and then I'm just going to ask everybody else to come up, and, uh, and they'll be reading theirs as well. So I've got a couple of them here. And the good thing about being up here is that uh, Marty asked me to read a couple different ones, and I'm going to change it <laughs> and read one that I actually want to read. Um, and then I'll deal with her wrath later. Uh, but I haven't got a chance to read this one yet, so I'm going to do it anyway. Um, as we say in law enforcement, I just you know, right here. So I'm going to do whatever I want to do. So I'm going to read uh, Another Brother, which is directly about, uh, about Rick Better. The shrill of the phone and the words, he's dead. My heart rips. Simple words, questions automatic. Who, what, where, when, and the impossible why, again. Crushed, I try to remember how to talk. The room's a black hole, four in, four hold, four out. I combat breathe just like Rick taught. Mary stirs, eight months ago she heard the same questions. Another brother lost. Can we do this again? My voice cracks like our first date. We hold hands. His life, his wife, his kids, not again. Sadness first, then stories, or stories first. We each make our own call. Rick could build self-esteem or houses, but his true calling was staffing the SUV of compassion, opening that passenger door to any troubled soul in need of advice or a steady hand. Rick steered his crew with pride, like a father, an uncle, or a brother. Now outside the auditorium, we shake our heads and whisper, never again. Another brother. 